You're watching Now at Nine. The debt debate, the downgrading of America's credit rating, have all done a number on the stock market in the past few days. The long-term effects on the economy as a whole won't be known for days, weeks, maybe months, maybe years. Who knows? I mean, it may take a while for us to digest all of this. So what is Congress going to do in reaction here today to answer your questions? That's one of the questions among many. Uh, Republican Congressman uh, Ben Quayle, thank you for being with us today. Yeah, it's great Good to be back. Pleasure Thanks. to have you back. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And you're in town for a number of things, not just to sit here on now and not talk <laughs> with us, but you are here for a job fair, a big job fair, over 80 companies. 4,000 yep. jobs being created. Talk first about that, if you will. Yeah, it, well, we're having a job fair tomorrow, and it's going to be at 9 a.m. at Paradise Valley Community College. And what we did, we went out to a bunch of employers and said, hey, we want to get everybody together in a, in a centralized area so people can come if you have jobs. And these are over 80 employers who have jobs immediately or they think they're going to have jobs in the near future. So uh, we just thought it was a good way to get everything together. We have about 4,000 openings, wow. and uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of people out there. Because, look, I mean, our unemployment rate is over 9% and the underemployment rates much higher than that. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can do to try to help facilitate that, that's what we're going to do. I'm surprised you found that many employers that were looking to hire people. Yeah, I mean, they're out there. Obviously, there's employers who are, are struggling um, and some small businesses and medium sized yeah. businesses that are, that are hurting, but there are some jobs out there, and uh, we just wanted to kind of help facilitate any sort of centralized location so people could come, give their resume, meet them, and hopefully it'll turn into some employment for people. On that note, we do have a question from Leslie Jones. She asks, What do you think about the inappropriate corporate U.S. tax policies favoring big companies? Why not tax the companies that outsource and move their workers offshore? Sure, as if the jobs were still here, done by Americans. Well, one of the things we have to look at uh, from a regulatory standpoint and from a tax standpoint is that we need to make sure that we have a level playing field and a competitive playing field for U.S. based companies. And what we're doing now is that we have 35% tax rate. It's the second highest in the world. And so that puts us at a competitive disadvantage. What I think that we should do is to get rid of a lot of the loopholes, a lot of the deductions that a lot of the bigger companies have been able to carve out in the tax code and make that lower the rates so that everybody's on the even playing field and people who are providing the best products and the best services are the ones who are going to succeed, not the ones with the best lobbyists. I want to go piggyback off of that question. This came to us an email from a financial planner. His name is Jason Washoe. He writes, what would be the best way to bring jobs home from China, India, and the Philippines? Well, I think that what we have to look at is some of the regulatory burdens that we're putting on our companies. Um, the, the Small Business Administration just came out with a report that said we have about 1.6 or 7 trillion dollars worth of fees and costs related to our regulatory burdens that we have here in the United States. So we need to ease that. We need to have smart regulation and efficient regulation, but not overly burdensome regulation. I think one specific example of where we have regulation going bad is with the NLRB and what, it, what happened with Boeing, is that Boeing is a, a company that has American jobs, American people, has 95 percent of their employees yeah. are American. They're trying to create American jobs, and yet they can't open their plant in South Carolina because the NLRB is putting a stop to it. That's not the message that we should be sending to, to uh, U.S.-based companies because they're going to continue to look elsewhere. We need them to look here in the United States to pr produce jobs here. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is force U.S. companies to, to pursue interests outside. Uh, speaking of jobs, it seems like a lot of these questions yeah. are about jobs. And Ellie asks, how do you keep government and public sector, ex public sector jobs here in our state uh, and at the same time appease the, what she calls anti-spend Tea Party? Because they're obviously against uh, necessar you know, using a lot of public dollars for things like that. Well, I think the people who are wanting smaller government, um, and those are people in the Tea Party and yeah. other people who are fiscally conservative, they're not, they're not anti-government. They really do think that we can have a more efficient government, and they're right. If you look at some of the GAO studies that have been coming out, we have multiple and multiple layers of various agencies and programs that do the exact same thing. Yeah. And so if we can streamline that process, then we're going to have better bang for our buck. And I think that that's what, what I want and that's what a lot of people want okay. uh, in the United States. All right. Moving on to taxes, Natalie Torres wants to know if you would ever support the rich tax. The tax breaks for the rich were intended to have them spend more in the markets. Now that they are in trouble, can we go back to the way it was before Bush made the cuts? Well, we've had a tax uh, policy that's been in place for 10 or 12 years. Um, what I want and what a lot of people on, on our side of the aisle want is we want tax reform. Um, which is very similar to what I was talking about on the corporate side. 
this would actually get rid of a lot of the deductions on the personal side, and a lot of them do favor those who make more money. So if we get rid of those, some of those deductions, make it smart, don't just go after everything. I mean, there's, there's certain things that we're going to hold off on. Um, but do that and reduce the rates. These are types of things that are pro-growth and make sure that we're not putting a disincentive on those who are going to try to succeed. We have a question. This isn't really a question. This is more of a comment. It's from Chris Forsberg, and he wants to know, do lawmakers and does the government understand how it is for the majority of Americans who can't pay their bills? It's a tough choice to pick what bills to pay and what bills not to pay. Can you talk about that? Well, I think that most people understand that uh, most Americans are going through tough times right now. And, it, you know, who knows if it's going to get better right now. I mean, all the economic indicators are that it could be sliding. We had a 0.4 percent growth in the first quarter of this year, 1.3 percent in the second quarter. We need to do a better job at making sure that we're providing a marketplace that will in, not inhibit job growth. Washington and uh, Congress doesn't create jobs, but they do an awful good job at destroying jobs. So we need to make sure that we're doing things that are just going to promote efficiency and confidence in the marketplace and confidence for uh, job creators to take those risks to hire more people. Well, and, and let's just jump on top of that, the economy. What, uh, this is just a question in general. What's going on in the stock market over the past couple of days? I mean, is this because of what Congress did? Is there anything you guys can do to fix this? Well, I think that the biggest thing is that if you look at the economic indicators that have been coming out, pouring out over the last few weeks, they've been extraordinarily negative. Um, and that is just that you have a lack of confidence right now. And I, I think that the, old, the best thing that Congress uh, and the administration could do is say, hey, look, we're going to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that we're not inhibiting economic growth. And one of the things when we're talking about the regulatory burdens, yeah. the president has the ability to just call up the heads of each one of those agencies and say, you know what, let's stop what you're doing right now, hold off until we can have some economic recovery, because right now you're having a real negative impact mm -hmm. on uh, economic growth and job creation. All right, we appreciate you joining us, Congressman. We appreciate all of your questions as well. And uh, we'll continue to watch what's going on because everybody's watching and everyone's waiting. Absolutely. And, Thanks a lot. And we do have the information on the job fair yes. on our website, okay, abc15.com. So check for that. All Thank right. you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, Congressman. Great to see you. Meantime, we do want to jump real quickly to some break.